Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and today we are back once again with a brand new video commentary for Battle for Middle Earth 2 on the patch 1.9 version 2.0. We are once again on the map Hearts of Eisen, which is, you know, some things never change. But the matchup is a nice one, Man of the West against Mordor, good against evil. I call these matchups El Clasico matchups and they are by far my most favorite matchups. And if you are for the first time on this channel and you are looking for more Battle for Middle Earth content in the future, please consider subscribing and leave a like on this video. If you don't know, likes are helping quite a lot. And before further ado, let's get it started. At the left side of the map, we have the green model player AOW Luxus. And his opponent at the right side is the blue man of the best player Sauron, who is known as the best battle for Middle Earth 2 player in the game. And he was also participating in the Rise of the Witch King tournament. And I'm looking forward to actually host a tournament for battle for Middle Earth 2 pretty soon. So stay tuned guys if you don't want to miss that. You can also check me out on my Twitch channel twitch.tv slash beyondstandards if you don't want to miss those games in the live stream. A 2 farm start from the Man of the West player and actually he was using the human wood in order to scout the area but the model player was covering the human wood with his own tainted land. After starting 2 slaughterhouses he's gonna build up 2 orc pits now. Alright, uh, this is something you will see much more often in Battle for Middle Earth 2, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, because as mentioned several times, uh, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, if you pick a random faction in BFME 2, your opponent won't get the chance to see your faction in the loading screen. That's why we will see many many times players actually going for the scouting ability from the spellbook, just to be able to see the enemy faction, which is gonna increase your reaction time and everything else. Alright, so we're gonna have some orcs, you know, following up very very soon. Um, they cost even less in BFME 2 than in Rise of the Witch King. In Rise of the Witch King they cost 80 each. And they have also the Horde bonus here, which means when gathered in numbers of at least 70 or more, they're gonna get 33% damage and 20% more movement speed, which is quite nice. On the other side we see two farms into the archer range and the stable. He was also building a third farm by the way, and even a farm number 4. And yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure that soldiers or archers or even Gondor Knights are gonna have no trouble dealing with these orcs, but you know, sometimes quantity goes over quality, sometimes, and in this case the model player will have a lot of orcs the man of the west player has to deal with, and ideally he wanna protect himself. Alrighty, so the man of the west player is actually not going for anything, you know, like soldiers, he's gonna go for some defensive units, in this case those Gonda archers, and gonna use those, you know, Gonda knights for offensive purposes in order to take down the enemy slaughterhouses and hurt his economy. That's the goal, by the way. We have some orc archers also for defense. The reason why they are glowing is obviously because they are standing on the tainted land, which is gonna increase uh, their armor by 35%. Orcs are moving through the bottom right side of the map and one of them is moving through the middle. So the Gondor player, or in this case the man of the west player Sauron, has to deal with these orcs first. I like the way that the model player is using different types of pathways, so he's actually moving from all the three possible pathways on the map for Tophizen 2. He might be able to see this farm, let me check if he's able to see that, yes he's able to see that and he's gonna be now able to take it down, because Gondor knights are not in position. And orcs are not dealing too much damage, so they're gonna take a little bit of you know time in order to destroy this one. The farm has 2000 HP, and the slaughterhouse on the other side has only 1600 HP. So taking down a, uh, taking down a slaughterhouse is gonna be much much easier than destroying one of these farms. But this farm is gonna be definitely taken down, and also this one is getting attacked at the same time. The archers are not there in time; they have to move all the way around. I'm assuming, yeah, and I think. In this kind of situations, what you can do as the model player is turn on them, you know, in order to take them down, you can damage them, because your orcs, they are pretty much for free, they cost nothing, they cost only 60 each, while those arches, they cost 200 each. Alright, the farm has been taken down. I don't see the Gondor Knights on the field though, never mind, they were here, alright, they were able, I think, to take down one of the slaughterhouses potentially. They have also some, you know, defensive units around this area, he's gonna get some Easterlings on the field as well. And yeah, the Gondor Knights are trampling down those orcs, no big deal, and they will be able to defend these farms around this area. This farm is gonna be potentially taken on, it's gonna be very very close. I mean, it's gonna go down, I guess, one more hit? Oh my goodness, but he will be able to destroy it later on anyway, but it's nice safe here from the Man of the West player Sauron, I like it. 
Now he realizes, okay, sending those units out one by one is not gonna achieve too much for me. I think that's the reason why he's gonna try to collect a big army with the horde bonus potentially and then some easter links in between. Just to protect the archers, also orcs against Gondor Knights. He's creeping the work layer now. And you can see the Warwicks are able to trample down enemy units and even the pikemen. And normal orcs, they will never be able to creep this work layer by themselves. The Gondor Knights are moving for the attack. Orc pits are still level 1, same also with the Haradrim Palace. You are not able to recruit any Corsars or any Lancers from the Haradrim Palace unlike in Rise of the Witch King. And also from the Orc pit you are not able to recruit any Black Orcs, only normal Orcs are allowed. Also different heroes by the way, you can pretty much purchase or recruit in this case uh, this kind of heroes, those Nazgûls on, on horse. You can also get dismounted obviously. And these are, you know, not existing in Rise of the Witch King. We have some Tower Guards now on the field from the Barracks level 1. There are no Rohan Spearman units also in the Man of the West faction. So, what I'm trying to say is you have basically much less units to work with in BFME 2 in compared to Rise of the Witch King. But the thing is, the more units you have, the harder is it going to be to balance the game, you know? When there are like 10 more units for each faction, you have to make a perfect balance in order to make it fair for every single matchup, while BFME 2 is much more basic game, which doesn't even have Engma as a faction, and all the other factions has, you know, have less units and less heroes or other heroes. BFME 2 is more like movie-like, you can see that from the Moro faction, you know, you have Black Riders on the field, in this case this Nazgûls, you are only able to recruit them in Rise of the Witch King from the Siege Works level 3 as the Black Rider Battalion, they don't work as a hero. And if they, if they, you know, if you lose them, you can revive them, but they're gonna be still only level one, unlike the heroes from the fortress. This Nazgul is leveling up quite fast, actually, guys. He's almost level four. Has the active uh, or the passive debuff, so he's gonna debuff the units around him. The model player is moving also through the bottom side. This farm is gonna be potentially taken down, and the Gondor Knights are gonna be used for harassment. If a troll cage up on the field, and the troll cage is pretty much the same, you have a mountain troll, you have a drama troll, and you have also the attack trolls from the uh, troll cage level 3. Same goes also to the troll cage from the rise of the witch king. It looks like they didn't disable the hearing heroes because Gollum is lurking around. <laughs> I like that. And I made a, I made a video guys about, uh, about the ring heroes from Battle for Middle Earth 2 on the new patch, and they are looking so strong, trust me on that one. Alright, so this Nazgul is gonna heal up over time. Uh, you should always avoid fighting against Tower Guards with any uh, mounted hero pretty much. If you have to deal with them, you can always get dismounted. That's gonna increase your you know armor against pikemen. Oh he was he will try to catch the Gondor Knights. Can he do it? Nice catch from the Nazgul. I like it. Beautiful. Another Nazgul is joining the battlefield, by the way, guys. Now we have two of them he needs to deal with. Again, avoid fighting tower guards, it's very, very important. The Nazgul's are very squishy against pikemen. As long as they are mounted at least. With a small fight, which Moro player should be able to win. He has, by the way, also level 3 units there. He has to be careful with this one. Oh, unfortunately he lost them. Also, the tower guards are really, really strong now. They're almost level 4. But, you know, they are getting outnumbered big time. They can't win this fight. The Nazgul is going to be used for harassment. And we have the first summon of the game. In this case, we have the hobbits joining the battlefield for the Man of the West player Sauron. He's gonna commit against Haradrim Palace level 1. The buildings in BFME 2, like mentioned several times, are way squishier than the buildings in Rise of the Witch King. You can see that yourself. The hobbits were able to take down the Haradrim Palace in, in no time. Slaughterhouse has to be protected though because it's level 2 and he has the industry buff on it. Which is gonna increase the resource income by 300%. The farm is gonna be taken down. I mean, the Moro player is doing a great job harassment-wise. He's using those Nazgûls quite nicely, and he has now two of them. But now we have Aragorn, the king of Gondor, is joining the battlefield, guys. And he has a passive ability once he hits level 5. The Andurid Sword is gonna be a passive, which is an active in BFME 1, which you can purchase from the spellbook. I mean, it's also a, a passive, but you have to purchase that, and it's much more powerful than the stats you're gaining from Aragorn here in BFME 2. You get only 10% increased damage, but also 7% increased movement, uh, movement speed, which is gonna be 
way less impactful than the Anduril effect you get in BFME 1. <laughs> in BFME 1, your Aragorn is hitting like an absolute track when you have your Anduril purchase. Right, the Builder is potentially gonna be able to get away the Nazgûls. I think they need to avoid fighting Aragorn. Aragorn is very, very tanky and he's leveling up quite fast until level 4. Alright, and this Nazgûl is also level 3, guys. So they have both the debuff. Which, by the way, is gonna, you know, make the enemy unit suffer minus 25% armor and minus 25% damage. And leadership and buffs are uh, gonna be getting, you know, completely neutralized, nullified, uh, which means they don't have leadership when uh, Nazgûls are close to the enemy units and they have, they have at least a level 2 uh, passive debuff ability or not. Alright, the troll is smashing down those Condonites, no big deal. Why they are glowing though? Does he have you? Did he use Rallying Call? Yes, he did. Okay. Uh, Rallying Call has been used. It does not give you any armor, by the way. So you're still gonna die quite fast. It's gonna only increase your damage output and also your combat experience. Aragorn doesn't care. <laughs> Aragorn is just walking in. Like, who is next? You know? He's very, very powerful. We know that. But he has to kind of avoid fighting a big army like this if he has nothing to back up. I mean, he has Atalas, right? And he has also Blade Master, which is gonna make him not only more. Tanky, but also increases damage output. And in the worst case scenario, you can also go for the heal from your spellbook, from the power points. But he's actually taking way too much unnecessary damage. He has to use Atelas now. And he has to be careful. I mean, he can also use Blade Master. I'm actually surprised why he didn't use it at the first place. He's gonna use it now. That's gonna make him tankier. And he will be unlocking the leadership, which is gonna be the high tier leadership from Aragorn once he hits level 4. The one man army himself. During all this time, the Man of the West player Sauron is untouched. The Archer range is level 2. We might see some rangers later on. We have some units in the middle guarding this river. And he's expanding at the same time while being able to protect his farms against the trolls. We have 700 command points, by the way, available for the Man of the West player. And the first Fell Beast is joining the battlefield. And that's also one of the differences between Rise of the Witch King and BFME 2. Because in BFME 2 Rise of the Witch King, the Faldis are working like a Nazgul. However, you can't get them on the horse. You can also get them, you can only get them mounted or dismounted from the Faldis. So you can only fight on foot or on the Faldis. While the Faldis here can't get mount dismounted. You can't choose to be on foot instead of the Faldis, you know? Alright, nice attack. Dealing splash damage, by the way. Leveling up quite fast. He has no abilities though. So even if you get him level 10. I think that's not gonna affect him too much. He's gonna get some more HP and DPS, I'm assuming, but you won't have any advantages in terms of spells from the Fell Beast. He has this creature ability with level 1 anyway, so um, it's always nice to have some extra HP on your heroes and DPS, but the main reason why you should try to invest your time into leveling them up is obviously to unlock more stronger powers from the hero. Aragorn was able to get away, he's level 4 now, has leadership unlocked. Gondor Knights, one of them was also able to get away. The Man of the West player is kinda in a really bad spot right now. Luckily he was able to expand around the bottom side. Which is gonna give him still a, quite a lot of, uh, you know, resource income, 750 command points still. On the other side, the Mordor player has 975 command points collected. And he is getting yet another hero on the field and his name is Mouth of Sauron. Going now for Tavern next, which is a building does, which, not, which does not exist in uh, Rise of the Witch King. Uh, you can recruit those Corsars in Rise of the Witch King from your Haradrim Palace instead. He has also Barrage Unlocked, guys, after Industry. He's gonna use it though. Is he gonna use it on the units? Or on the buildings? I'm not sure. He's gonna use it on the units. And also being able to damage the enemy buildings. Theodin has to be getting away. He gives you leadership with level 1. Uh, which... Um, no, with level 2 actually, I take it back. He gives you leadership with level 1 in Rise of the Witch King. The Nazgul has to be careful, don't underestimate Aragorn. Aragorn is very, very strong, and that's the reason why <laughs> you should not underestimate him. The Felbis is not gonna commit against Aragorn, which makes sense because Aragorn, even though if, he, if he's low like that, he's still quite tanky. The Well is gonna help them to sustain over time. And Theodin, by the way, is also now level 3, has unlocked the leadership, which is gonna be. And only damage and combat experience. Unlike from Aragorn, Aragorn has also damage and combat experience, but also armor, which is very, very efficient. Okay, so Mouth of Sauron is level almost 3. 
The Nazgul reached was level 5, was able to survive, one of the Nazguls has been taken down, Theoden is going for a trample on those orc archers. Has to be careful though, he is kinda alone around this side. The Corsairs are doing a great job. And from the tavern you are only able to recruit as units the Corsairs, but it works also like a siege works in, you know, in Rise of the Witch King, in which you can purchase all the upgrades you need. He has three of these now on the field. He's gonna spam a lot of units and he can he can afford it, guys. He has industry on this level 3 slaughterhouse, which again means 300% increase uh, increased resource income. On the other side, he has also full command points, so he has a lot of resource income. And with the Felbies on the field, he can always fight for the map control, expand and take down the enemy farms all the time. And the Man of the West player can't uh, fight against that right now at least. We might see some more rangers later on, I think they're gonna be needed in order to deal with the Felbies. We're gonna have Hobbit, Hobbit allies summon, he was using the Elven Wood or the Human Wood in this case to get the vision he needed because you need to have vision in order to summon the units and then he was summoning the Hobbits in order to take down the level 3 slaughterhouse and he will be able to do that. The Felbies, maybe he should be trying to use the Screech ability but it would be too late and the Screech doesn't affect uh, heroes so you don't affect Frodo, Merry, Sam or Pippin with the Screech and taking down the level 3 slaughterhouse it's quite big, I like it. Uh, the Gondor Knights are level 4 now, and uh, Theodin is gonna get the Glorious Charge unlocked once he's level 7, which is gonna make those Gondor Knights pretty much invincible, look at this. 99% <laughs> increased armor, 25% damage, and become immune uh, to slow effects when you are trampling down the enemy units, because the way it works in Battle for Middle-earth games, if you trample, you get slowed down with your calf units, like Gondor Knights or any other cavalry unit in the game, it's gonna get slowed down. The more units are around, the less effective your trample is going to be. Look at this. They are getting slowed down. If they would just keep riding through the units, they're gonna be as slow or even slower than infantry units. And Glorious Charge is gonna make you immune to that. You're gonna be fast like if you are not riding normally. This way you can actually kill multiple units at the same time. 10 power points collected, decent amount of resources collected as well for the model player. Man of the West player on the other side, there's still 950 command points available though, so he was expanding around this side, he has a level 3 farm here and here, and a level 2, almost level 3 farm in the back side. And remember, the higher the level of the farm is, the more, combat, the more um, command points you gain. Aragorn will be potentially able to get away. 14 power points collected after the heal, Rylan Cole, Human Wood, and the Hobbit allies. On the other side, we have 13 power points collected and the mouth of Sauron has been unfortunately taken down. Ralinko is able to stack with the leadership of Aragorn, so those rangers in this case, they have now 75% increased uh, damage output. You get 50 from Ralinko and 25 from Aragorn. Corsars with Forge Plates, guys. Yeah, they have Forge Plates now purchased from the tavern, <laughs> I like it. Did he also purchase the heavy armor? No, he didn't. No, he didn't, unfortunately. Uh, and the Fell Beast is going for an attack, but he has to be extremely careful. The Rangers, they don't joke, and we have some more Rangers now for the summon. The Fell Beast? Oh, the last attack from the Rangers. Very evil to take down the Fell Beast from the Mortal Player. The Nazgul is level 6, the other Nazgul is level 3, guys. Aragorn is taking some damage, but I, f I think he's fine. He was also using the Alenziel. And the Nazguls are running for their lives. In the worst case, you can also get mounted with them in order to get away faster. The level uh, 6 Nazgul has also unlocked the Morgul Blades, which can be used against enemy units or heroes. Which is like a curse, it's gonna cause the enemy unit or hero take damage over time. And once they die, I think they're gonna turn into a white, which you can then control afterwards as the model player. The rangers, um, they don't have the long shot, uh, from the summon at least. The rangers. Uh, from the normal archer range, they have the long shot if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they have the long shot. There we go. Uh, but they're gonna be gone soon. And unlike in Rise of the Witch King, the archer units in BFME 2 are actually able to deal damage to buildings. Look at this. I mean, not that significant, obviously. The model player is now getting some Lammer Mills on the field to get some more money. I mean, remember, he was actually, guys, he has Troll Cage level 3, 3 Taverns, and 2 Orc Pits plus a Haradrim Palace. So he can recruit right now from 7 different buildings units, <laughs> which means you will need a lot of money in order to make it work and especially because he's also buying upgrades on those units, you know, and the upgrades they cost also 250 each, so it's not cheap at all. And even though he has full command points, but losing the slaughterhouse with the industry buff on it, 
was kind of hurting the Mordor player big time. On the other side, the Man of the West player has also full command points. He has collected already 9 power points after the Ranger summon. The Fell Beast is you know, back on the field now. The Aragorn is gonna use Atelas, I'm assuming. Now he's using Blademaster first, which again gives him 50% increased armor. He's gonna use the heal. And in the worst case scenario, he has also the heal from Aragorn himself, the Atelas. Theoden is level 6 already. It's actually getting scary for the model player because Theoden is only one level away from getting the glorious charge unlocked. 12 power points collected for the for the Man of the West player, almost 13 power points collected. Screech is being used now. Aragorn should be fine, I'm assuming. Even though there are no rangers to back them up, he needs to move with the rangers now, and that's gonna be also the case. I think there is no point of attacking Aragorn over and over again, because you will need to attack him like 100 times in order to take him down. You should try to get some more power points slash experience on your Felbies by taking down the enemy units. Rangers, they're gonna force the Felbies away. The power points are rising. Look at the money from the Man of the West player. I think he's aiming to get Gandalf on the field, guys. Let's see if this is gonna be the case. It's a risky move and the Felbies is getting melted down. Just like that. Aragorn doesn't care, he's going in and the long shot was hitting like a truck, but look who is here! His name is Balrog, the big boy is coming, the Man of the West player was able to react fast enough, he was able to save a lot of his, a lot of his units. If he doesn't move away guys, he would be losing every single unit around this area. If attack troll right away on the field against Aragorn, let's see if he can take him down on a one on one. Remember Aragorn has no blade master, no Atelas and no heal available. He's running for his life, but I'm assuming the troll is faster than Aragorn. It's gonna be nice. I think Aragorn is gonna take him down though. Yeah, Aragorn is very, very strong during all this time. Balrog is setting up for a beautiful breath fire. Should be trying to take down the archer range and the marketplace at the same time if he can. Breath fire is gonna be used now. It's gonna damage the buildings big time, but it's not able to one shot them though. Uh, Ignite has to be used always, which is gonna double the damage and give you also more armor. Okay, the marketplace is down, the level 3 farm has been taken down and the archer range is gonna go down as well. I mean, he has still the stable up on the field and the double barrack, so he's not done yet. Human wood is gonna be used once again, I think, for the Hobbit allies. That's gonna be, I think, you know, pretty much for the third or fourth time now he's doing it. We are getting some more trolls on the field. The attack trolls from the level 3 troll cage, they cost really, they are very expensive guys, they cost 1100 each. But you have to dominate troll with level 1 available, uh, which you know, which gives you the chance to take the control of the enemy targeted troll. I don't think, I don't know if you can also use it against the troll at the bottom left side. In Rise of the Witch King you can, and look at this guys, Gandalf the Grey is joining the battlefield after Valrog is gone. <laughs> Just like in the movie, unfortunately he's only Grey, once he's level 5 he's gonna turn in automatically into Gandalf the White. And leveling up for heroes in BFM2 uh, is pretty fast actually until they hit level 4 at least. And with level 4 all alone you will be able to get mounted, even with level 3 actually. And with level 2 you unlock also the lightning sword. Uh, for now you have only the wizard blast and the shield bubble. You can activate manually, unlike in BFM1. And in Rise of the Witch King you don't see a button like this, you have to know it. You know, you have to know that you have to press U on your keyboard in order to activate the shield bubble for Gandalf. Power points are rising though. And look at this level, guys. He was level 1 a second ago, now he's already level 3. He can get now mounted on his Shadow Fax. Aragorn doesn't care. He is fighting against the Snazgus and taking them down one by one. An Earthquake ability is gonna be unlocked now. You gotta keep an eye on this area. He's gonna use it potentially right there. He's actually using it on top of the enemy units. That's interesting. And the units are not taking that much damage. I think no one of them died actually, guys. Maybe he wanted to save his Aragorn. Aragorn is safe though. He has Atelas still available. He's level 9 as well. Lightning Sword is gonna be used now from Gandalf. On the Nazgul, he was able to catch him. Nice one. And Nazgul, uh, Gandalf is already level 4 now. While Aragorn is level 9. He's only one level away from summoning the Offbreakers, the army of the dead. Which can take down the enemy units in no time. He's gonna build yet another archer range now. He was losing the first one what he had, remember, against the, against the Balrog. I believe that Earthquake was not that impactful. He should be using it against the buildings, in my opinion. Uh, troll Cage level 3, 
three taverns, two orc pits and Haradrim palace is still only level 1. I mean, we might see some Haradrim archers later on, just to be able to deal with the rangers or even the heroes from the Man of the West player. But for now, he is actually getting a lot of Corsairs on the field from Triple Tavern. So he's spamming them all the time. They cost also, they are very expensive actually, guys. They cost 340 each. And yeah, they cost even a little bit less than Easterlings. Okay, I take it back. Here is level 7, has Glorious Charge unlocked, but in order to use it, you have to get mounted. And he has also gone the night around to use it on them. He might also recruit some Rohirrim later on from the, uh, from the stable level 2. Yeah, he can also use the King's Favor over and over again to give experience to the selected targets. Gandalf is on his horse now, he's almost level 5, has Wizard Blast and Lightning Sword both on cooldown. The Moto player keeps up the pressure now. The farm is gonna get demolished from the Man of the West player, to, you know, to not give any experience or power points to his opponent. Gandalf should be fine, as long as you have Shield Bubble available, you don't need to be scared of anything, pretty much. Because the Shield Bubble is gonna make him almost invincible. You know, when it's active. Uh, but uh, there is no reason of stepping up forward, I'm assuming, when your Wizard Plus is on cooldown. But it's gonna be available soon and he can actually go for a beautiful, beautiful uh, Wizard Plus ability. On the other side, we see around this side Tower Guards fighting for the map control. Gandalf is, not, uh, and Gandalf is now gonna go in potentially. Uh, power points are rising for both the players. 13 power points are already collected for the Moto player after the Baldrog summon. Gandalf is really close to level 5. Again, that's gonna turn him into Gandalf the White. Keep a look right now. He's grey as you can see and he's gonna also change visually. You can see now, right? He's level 5 and is now Gandalf the White. 14 power points collected. 1000 command points available. That's the maximum. You can't have more than that. On the other side, we have 900 command points available for Sauron. But he has a great amount of resource income, guys. With the marketplace. It looks like he didn't. Uh, he was already purchasing this uh, Grand Harvest, which means he's getting more money from the farms. Wizard Plus, I missed this one. Lightning Sword is still on cooldown. Aragorn is popping off. Tom Bombadil summon was used as well from the Man of the West player. Sonic Song, beautiful one here from Sauron. So, his name is Sauron, but he's playing the Man of the West player in this story. I don't know what to say. Gandalf has to be careful. He has Shield Bubble, which is going to be used now. That's going to make Gandalf quite tanky. Uh, yeah, I mean, he is pretty much, look at this, absorbs every kind of damage dealt, dealt to him. Like, what <laughs> What else do you want to know, you know what I'm saying? Ranger Summon will be used now. That's gonna be, I think, enough to deal with this army of the Moto player. I think the Moto player is losing his heroes very, very easily. And having to invest so much money back into your heroes you just lost, you know... It's gonna hurt you big time. We couldn't see a big boy like Witch King, for example, yet from the from the model player. He was only able to get a Mouth of Sauron, the Nazgûls, and one fell beast on the field so far. I mean, Gandalf can also go to the well, but it looks like the Man of the West player has no well up on the field anymore. So he's gonna just sit in the middle of the map to recover over time. Aragorn has Atelas. Yeah, he can also use it, use it on Gandalf to heal him up. Atelas doesn't only work on Aragorn himself, but also for the allied heroes around him. And also, <laughs> Aragorn is almost level 10, guys. Like, he's gonna get level 10 after killing the Slaughterhouse, trust me on that one. And that's gonna be a massacre, actually, for Army of the Dead. Yeah, he's gonna level, <laughs> he's level 10 now. And he's gonna say now, fight for me. Fight for me, Army of the Dead. And the Nazgul is back on the field, almost level 5. I mean, at this point of the game, Aragorn is definitely, definitely a one-man army, guys. Like, he can go in when everything is available, like Blade Master, Atalas, Elendil, and Army of the Dead. And he has heal in his kit, he has heal as a power point from the spellbook. So it's gonna be impossible for you to take him down when Blade Master is active, with this much sustain. The Felbies are getting dismounted, which is smart, because they have to deal now with Tower Guards. One of them is level 5, one of them is level 5 as well now. And Gandalf is just recovering over time. And the Man of the West player now has the upper hand definitely with this strong heroes on the field. Theoden was not even using one time glorious charges yet. I would love to see that in a situation like this. Because you can easily one shot those. There we go. <laughs> For death and glory. 
Let's go. Glorious charge it is. Trample them down. It looks like you want to just commit against the Corsars. Against the Tavern, I mean, I'm saying. And look at this. Wizard Blast has been used as well to kill the Corsars. No big deal. And Taverns have a passive. So the more Taverns you have, up to four, you can actually recruit your... Uh, Corsars 20% cheaper. Remember they used to cost only 340. Now they cost uh, 360. Now, I'm assuming if you have only one, they're gonna cost like 380. Potentially even 400. Aragorn was just using the army after that. Killing all the units around. He has 25 power points collected already as well. Like what's going on? The model player was so much ahead. And I think he messed that up kinda. Uh, I don't know how. How? <laughs> Because he had such a big advantage in my opinion though. He had heroes, he had map control, but he was committing for no reason with the Felbys against the Rangers. The Nazgûls, they need a lot of time to take down one level 2 farm actually, guys. Uh, yeah, Gandalf has also a crazy amount of DPS. So, if you have nothing up with Gandalf, you can still 1v1 on Nazgûl, no big deal. With your melee attacks, with your auto attacks. And you are one of the tankiest heroes, if not the tankiest, with Aragorn, with Gandalf, if your shield bubble is up. Hobbit allies and the Worm is gonna be used defensively now. The Man of the West player is making the right choice and disengaging. There is no reason of committing against a building when the Worm is around to protect that. Reposition is gonna be used over and over again, potentially. Uh, yeah, the Worm is gonna disappear now, pretty much all by himself after a couple of seconds. Yeah, look at this. Time remaining is going down without being able to achieve too much. Ideally, you want to use the worm against buildings, though. In order to take down the resource buildings, in this case the farms from the Man of the West Place Sauron, or even the production buildings like the barracks, the stable, or the archer range. He's also going for the iron ore. Upgrade on the siege works, uh, on the blacksmith, I'm, assuming, I'm saying, sorry, level 3. You can also purchase the upgrades, heavy armor, and forge plates on that one, if he wants to. Uh, Gandalf is gonna ride forward. Once he's level 10, he's gonna unlock the Ward of Power, which can kill every unit around him. He's gonna heal up over time now. And one tower guy was also able to survive. Uh, at this point of the game, it's like a hero party. I'm assuming the model player will struggle to only take down the enemy heroes, not even talking about the enemy units. Because Gandalf is very, very powerful, you know, by himself with level 7. And Aragorn is a one-man army anyway at this point of the game with level 10. And even Theodin, guys, is level 10 now. I mean, you don't get much from Theodin in a, in a combat in the combat power, because he's not made to 1v1 other units or heroes, I'm assuming. He's more like a sportive hero with the leadership, with the utility he offers for your units, with the Glorious Charge, for the Calf, for Gondonite slash Rohirrim. Cloudbreak has been used to stun the enemy units, by the way. Uh, full command points for both the players. Balrog is almost back up. The slaughterhouse is going down. Aragorn is just hitting like an absolute truck. Also, the archers in the backside have the fire upgrade purchase, which is going to increase their DPS against buildings. Look at the damage now from the rangers. Aragorn and Gandalf, they don't care, guys. Like, they don't care. But Aragorn might be in trouble, though. He's taking way too much damage from all the buildings and the towers from the fortress. Barricade has been used from the model player defensively as well, but it's going to be taken down in a second. And the Balrog is being used on top of the Gandalf, just why not? The shield bubble was not used from Gandalf, and he actually took like zero damage from the summon without the shield bubble. And I think Gandalf can actually 1v1 him though. However, he has only Easter Light available. Look at the damage. He should be using the shield bubble to kind of avoid the damage from the fire whip, I'm assuming. But you know, it's a win-win situation for the Man of the West player regardless. Because if you can, you know, kind of force your opponent to use the Balrog defensively like this. Aragorn is actually taking a holy moly, the fire whip is actually taking so much, you know, dealing so much damage to heroes. <laughs> He's actually going now back, that's a nice bait, I like it. And the Gondor Knights are looking dope with the heavy armor though, I like it. Aragorn was using Atelas. I think he's fine. Those Corsars, they can't really hurt him. And Balrog is just losing so much time here for no reason, like he might be not able to do anything. Barrage is gonna be used on top of the enemy units by the way. He's now going all out. Gandalf is in a safe spot. You can use the Lightning Sword and Easter Light on the Balrog. I don't think it's gonna be enough to burst him down though. It would be enough to burst him down in BFME 1. In BFME 1, when you can use Lightning Sword and Easter Light on a, on a Balrog, when your Gandalf is level 10 for example, 
I think it's enough to one-shot him. But again, if you use that and the Balrog gets the chance to use Fire Whip on you, he's going to be able to one-shot you as well. Mapo Sauron is back in the business. He has the adaptability unlocked with level 4, which is an active debuff, uh, which is not going to only reduce the damage and armor from the enemy units. But the game is over, the Moto player is giving it up, and a nice performance from the Man of the West player. Back and forth game, I think. Uh, the Moto player had several times the chance to win the game, but I think this is a proof why you should never give up. Uh, there is always chance, and as Gandalf would like to say, there is always hope for the Baggins. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. I see you next time. Take care of yourselves, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace.